everyone, I'm Lauren Ray, and this is the All Wound Up podcast. I believe we're on skein 8, so we're almost up to double digits. Uh, YouTube says it's been three weeks since I last uploaded, so I'm going to go with that. Um, Today is Thursday, July 19th, and here we are. If you want to find me on social media, you can find me first try on uh, Ravelry as Mistral and on Instagram as Lore.Romero. Uh, those are really the two best platforms to reach me, but there is also a Facebook page for this podcast as well as a Ravelry group. And there have been some people pretty active in the Ravelry group uploading shawls for the shawl along, so that's been pretty great, pretty nice to see. Uh, since I last podcasted, we, uh, the people in my internet Facebook group have had our opening day for our swaps. So I really want to thank Heidi Grantham and I'm going to show you some of the goodies that she sent me uh, in a little bit. But Heidi Grantham was my partner and she put together an absolutely awesome package. She completely and totally blew me away with what she sent and with what I know she's still sending because I'm told that there's another box which will be amazing. Uh, Anyway, so thank you, Heidi, really, from the bottom of my heart. Suzanne and Thad came up to open the swap boxes, and we did record a mini skein. Um, I usually try to rein in my sailor potty mouth when I'm recording for you guys so that I don't come across as somebody who can't keep it in, Um, but I joined... Suzanne at that in my usual profanity spewing manner, um, so we're not going to upload that. Um, we also recorded in another room, um, not in here where I usually podcast because it was about 9 billion degrees in my apartment and I only have air conditioning in the bedroom. So we also were kind of crammed in front of the camera and it was hard to see all three of us at once. If we do open together for future swaps, we will um, record a little bit differently uh, so that we can upload it. But we did try to record a mini skein, it just didn't quite happen. Um, So I will show off what I got in the swap um, and I'll talk a little bit about what they got because some of the stuff that they got was pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, All right, so we opened our swap boxes, but um, I also. I mentioned that I'm a potter and that I'm trying to make yarn bowls. I also think that I finally perfected and mastered the form that I'm going to be using for my yarn bowls. Um, I have several people that I'm going to be sending out a bowl to so that they can test it um, and we can figure out you know if I need to make any changes but that is something that I'm ready to start you know, going into some sort of small scale production for. So that'll be pretty cool um, if I can make some yarn bowls and get them out there into the world for you guys. Uh, but right now I'm in the testing stages. I did um, go to a trunk show with Suzanne from Groovy Hughes. Um, it was at the knitting store in Oceanside, New York. So that's on the south shore of Long Island. It's actually in the same town that I was born. Uh, so <laughs> kind of homecoming, not really. But yeah, Uh, and I do have family that lives in that area in Rockville Center in Freeport. So um, went down there um, and they actually want me to possibly bring some of these yarn bowls, these future yarn bowls to them to uh, do some sales around Christmas. So that'll be pretty cool um, if I can get myself together and have a bunch of bowls to bring to them. sometime in early December, so that'll be pretty awesome. Anyway, uh, and the other thing that I did is I decided to start cross-stitching. For this swap, I did send my partner, Judy, hi Judy, a um, custom cross-stitch pattern that I got off Etsy, and I will put a link into the the shop that I used. Um, I sent her a custom cross-stitch pattern of her two dogs. She has two dogs, a chocolate palm, and a long-haired chihuahua named Mimi and Sadie. And so I paid someone on Etsy who has lots and lots of talent to design her a 
cross stitch pattern that was her dog's. So she um, is a knitter, but she's also a stitcher. And ordering that pattern really um, kind of led me down the rabbit hole into cross stitching. And it's something that I've always wanted to do. My Aunt Jean, my mom's middle sister, was always a cross stitcher until she, um, her eyesight got too bad to do it. And I've tried to learn in the past, but I've never really been able to get it. Um, this time though, it seems to be sticking. So I'm gonna show you a couple of little, very simple stitching pieces that I've been working on. Um, no, I'm not starting to spin, promise. Um, people have asked me if I plan to spin. Not really. Um, it looks cool, but I don't want to have more stash. And I feel like if I'm spinning yarn, then I'm going to be more pressured to use the yarn that I spin and not use any of my beautiful stash yarn that I really do want to use um, at some point in the future. I don't want to have stash that outlives life expectancy. So anyway, I'm going to go to finished objects. I do have a finished shawl for the shawl along. Um, so if you are participating, the summer shawl along uh, that I am hosting and actually co-hosting with Suzanne from Groovy Hues is running right now from June 1st through August 31st. You have all summer to make as many shawls out of as many different types of yarn as you want. Um, the only rule for me is that you use at least 400 yards of whatever yarn it is that you choose for whatever shawl it is that you're making. You can knit that shawl, you can crochet that shawl, you can weave that shawl, however you want to do it, as long as you have a shawl that's made out of at least 400 yards. So this is my first entry into the shawl along, and I obviously don't get to enter myself, but, um, oh. And you can find the details about that in my Ravelry group. Search All Wound Up Podcast on Ravelry and I come right up. Anyway, um, this is the Hop Brook Shawl by Bonnie Seno. And I did show it to you prior to blocking um, when I had a little bit of a problem with one of the ends. I had run out of this main color. This is Smoothly Grooven by Groovy Hughes Fibers and it's an Anarchy Dye Pot. So it is a one of a kind. Um, I love the striping that I got from the pooling. I think it's really it really adds to the character of the shawl. I think it does not take away from the lace points at all. And when I blocked them, they did open up into that nice flower shape. The shawl has a mock cable that runs along, um, making a border onto the lace section. And I've knit this before, I do love it. But I ran out of my main color and really was struggling with what to do about it. Suzanne was thinking of trying to dye some for me, but it had been a one-off, um, so she really didn't have the, the recipe written down and you know it didn't work out so well. So what I did, I had originally used a celery green single, um, and I haven't cut my ends. They're woven in, but I haven't trimmed them. I just took this off the blocking mats. What I did was I took one of the yarns that I got in the swap from Heidi, and I was able to um, finish off these last 20 or so rows on the tip using that yarn. Um, it is in the same color family, so I think it does work out pretty well. Um, it's not a glaring sore thumb. It is different. It is not the same, but I do kind of like it. Um, I think that there are way worse things that I could have used to substitute. Um, so short of going back and modifying the pattern heavily, using a, um, a different yarn for the tip. And this is on a very similar base. They're both on a single uh, merino silk blend. Um, so they did work out pretty well. I can feel a difference between the two. I don't know if that's the amount of silk content or that I handled this and had this bald for so long, but um, they're close enough that it's fine. So that is my hot brook shawl. It's got 19 points of lace. You could make it longer or shorter. Um, just follow the pattern increases and decreases and you'd be pretty much okay. So that's that's my hot brook shawl. It is very scarfy. It's an elongated crescent. So I will probably wear it something like this when it is not um, in the 80s. You know, I want to show off that pretty lace. So I'll probably wear it 
something like this but with the lace arranged all nicely um, yeah so that's that's my first finished object and that is that was part of the summer shawl along so I am knitting with you guys there's that my second finished object is actually a cross stitch piece um, so this was my first ever attempt at stitching and I love Harry Potter so I decided that I would go with something nice and simple and I decided to do the Harry Potter glasses with this cute little lightning bolt scar um, I did not realize how difficult the metallic thread would be to floss thread would be to work with but it um, it was much more difficult than the regular embroidery floss on the back is kind of a mess it was my first try um, but I think it'll be okay I do have plans to make two more um, very simple Harry Potter cross stitch patterns and I'm going to put them in a frame all three together um, and hang it up somewhere so that I have a nice way to display them but I do love Harry Potter and this was my first ever successful cross stitch so it was exciting even though it's very very simple oh this is designed by uh, Mirame Stitch. Mirame Stitch, I'm not sure. Um, it, it is on Etsy and it's a PDF download. So you can just um, purchase it and then it comes to your email and you download it. Yep, pretty simple. Oh, you're also supposed to start on, supposed to, um, start on 14 count Ada cloth. I wound up using 18 count because that's what the sample was knit in and I didn't want it to be too much bigger than that, not yet stitched in, and I didn't want it to be too much bigger. So that's my first cross stitch and I do need to um, do whatever you do to finish the ends, edges, um, before I do anything real with it. Um, I think because it's going in a frame, you trim it down and then mount it with some kind of uh, acid-free adhesive to the to whatever you're putting it on in the frame but I have to check before I do it um, so I'm gonna wait until I have the three done and then go from there my other finished object is another craft entirely um, I decided I was going to make some mugs to test out the glazes at the studio Oop, blowing out at the studio I'm currently working out of. If I hold it over here, it seems to be best. Um, so I decided to make a bunch of mugs to test out glazes. And um, I really liked how this one came out and I like how it fits in my hand. Um, so I decided that I would keep this for myself, uh, even though it had just started life as a glaze test. So this is a stoneware mug made out of a standard 192 clay base, which, um, Clay, different clay bases are basically like different yarn bases. They have their own quirks and their own textures. Um, but yeah, this was made with a 192. If anybody knows about that um, or wants to know about that. And it is glazed with what looks like a Celadon style glaze, but in actuality is uh, a green layered over a white. And um, yeah, I really enjoy it. Um, I think I need to work on my handle shaping a little bit, but cheers. Uh, so this, what I'm drinking, if anybody cares, is um, home brewed iced tea with um, some simple, some wild, very simple syrup. So there's one of my mugs, all finished out of the kiln, ready to go, food safe, exciting. Um, so there's that. Those are my three finished objects. I do have right over there behind the camera a fourth finished object, a knitting finished object, um, but it's not dry. I figured um, that it would take longer than the shawl to dry, but I did not figure it would take this much longer. It is worsted weight, so the yarn is much heavier than the yarn that I used for the hot brook, but I'll show it off next time. Um, it was the Seamus Slouch hat that I had some problems with. Um, the test was fine. The pattern worked out beautifully. I just had some problems and I'll talk about them when I show it off.
So, on to whips. <clears throat> my first whip is in my, I have to look down because the tag is inside. It's in my paper or threads project bag and this is a gnome project bag. Um, it's a size large. I believe they do have an extra large. So there you could get a whole sweater into this one um, to cut a loose thread. And you could get even more into um, the extra large. But this is my Blissa Elephant by the Bagsmith. Uh, the Bagsmith has stopped publishing her patterns um, and stopped selling them. However, the Knitting Place in Port Washington, which is the local yarn store that I do frequent most often, they had it for sale, um, a, a print copy, so I did purchase it through them. And if you wanted to try to make this pattern, um, go to thebagsmith.com, see if there's any way to contact her, the designer, or check with the ladies at the Knitting Place, Dinah and Pam. If they have another copy for sale, I'm sure that they would be happy to accommodate you. They do um, ship, they have an online site shop. So this is the Blissa Elephant, and it's basically knit in several pieces. So I knit the feet and legs first, then I knit this cute little tail, Uh, which has to have all of its ends woven in. So then, so you knit the feet and then you knit the, knit the tail. And then you cast on the body down here. This bum hole is where I will stuff the whole elephant later. Um, so it hasn't been closed in yet. But then you knit bottom up, up through the body. And I'm now on the head. I think this is the hole through which the trunk will be knit. You pick up stitches kind of like a sleeve to do that. Um, I'm a little bit confused about the wording of something in the pattern, in the pattern. so I did set it down, um, put it in timeout. The baby uh, that I'm knitting this for, he's about a month old, so I do have to get it finished up soon because he's going to be coming out of his cute little lumpy newborn stage and into the uh, aware of his surroundings playing with toys phase <laughs> soon, uh, so I do want to get it finished. but. Um, I think it's coming along pretty well. I'm knitting this out of um, yarn that I bought from a big box store. I used uh, Cozy Wool in Cozy Wool by Loops and Threads in Pewter for the main body, and then the trim is one of my favorite big box store yarns, also by Loops and Threads. It's Charisma. It's 100% acrylic, but it it is very soft and. Um, I don't feel like it pills and wears as poorly as some acrylic does. Uh, it's very affordable. If you wanted a bulky yarn for hats or mitts or scarves for somebody who may not take the time to take care of a fine yarn, this is a, a good choice. <clears throat> um, I do also have some of their fingering weight from Loops and Threads. Um, this is called Wool Like. Um, and I do quite like that as well, um, in terms of an affordable acrylic. So, just a thought. Um, but this is, this is my elephant, and he is almost ready to start really looking like an elephant. Right now he looks kind of like a snowsuit. I'm told that the elephant will be named Theodore, so this is Theodore the elephant. Um, he, so the next thing that I have to knit is the head, and then I do the trunk. So. Hopefully, um, I am able to get that sorted out. The problem that I'm having is that I have to make these little um, channels on the side of its head, basically like a guideline for where you're going to be putting the ears. Um, but it says that I should be at the beginning of the row when I'm not. So I have to tink back, I think, and really um, give a good count to figure out what I did. The other part of the problem is that I have an intense hatred for DPNs. Really can't stand them. I find them to be that I find that I am clumsy when I knit with them. I've only tried once or twice. I know I need to give them a real chance, but so I'm knitting on two circulars. Um, so sometimes I've had to shift things um, based on which needle they should be on. So I'm, I'm hoping that it's just a little issue like that. 
um, and I can easily figure it out. But the Blissa elephant, and I can't wait to show him to you guys because he looks like he's going to be really cute. Anyway, I have about a million other whips, and I've got cast on itis, and I'm really trying hard to fight off the cast on itis, but. I did cast something on last night. I feel like I finished that shawl, the shawlette, the hot brook, so maybe it's excusable, but over there, all those project bags, those are full of whips that I haven't touched, so I'm not talking about them. Yeah, they're hanging out with the flamingos, nice and safe. All right, so my next whip is in a an Otterly Adorable Knits project bag. This is unicorns and rainbows. Uh, this is a large size drawstring. It is, again, pretty sizable. Um, she does not have anything bigger than this, but you could fit a decent sized shawl project in it. Um, yeah. So, um, a friend of a friend who always admires my knitting recently received some bad news. This friend is 29 years old, and she was diagnosed with breast cancer. She had a double mastectomy, and she has spacers in. Um, I offered to knit her some knitted knockers, but she declined because she has her spacers in, and she's healing. She's very tender. Um, so I said, all right, um, how about I knit you a wrap or a poncho to wear to chemo? Um, I know that when you get chemo, you do have to have your arms out so that they can get to veins and put in ports and take care of you. Um, and I know that people do tend to get either very hot or very cold when they're in chemo. So I'm making a poncho for her. Um, and she is a vegan who is not quite into wool. So um, I'm using an acrylic blend. This is Barocco Comfort. Um, the poncho that I'm knitting is called I Want That Wrap. It's by Carolyn Kinghorn. Um, I do love Barocco Comfort. It is another favorite acrylic. I mean, look at the stitch definition that I'm getting with that. It's gorgeous. This is an acrylic blend. It's acrylic and nylon. Um, the I Want That Wrap is a free pattern on Ravelry. I've seen several of them walking around at Rhinebeck, and I have made two in the past for friends who are going through um, some rough times. It is a um, basically an extended rib over the whole body of the poncho and it has an I-cord edging that's knit right alongside the um, poncho itself. It's just a matter of slipping some stitches and then you wind up with this nifty little I-cord edge that makes it nice and thick and durable. So basically I have to knit about 50 more inches. I do have additional yarn for this. I just didn't put it in the project bag. It's in the other room. Um, I have to knit about 50 more inches and it gets folded in half and sewn with buttons on one shoulder. Uh, the buttons can be functional or they can just be um, a decoration. And because the gauge of the project is supposed to be so loose, you can just button right through. But I figure um, I'll ask her. I'll contact her when I'm about halfway through and ask if she wants buttonholes um, or not. So this is I Want That Wrap. It is a very simple knit, but um, the ones that I've knit before have been much loved and well used. And I try when I'm knitting, um, I know it sounds a little bit hokey or silly, I try when I'm knitting for someone who is going through a rough time to think positive thoughts. So if you could think positive thoughts in the direction of my friend who's in a very positively minded project bag right now. Um, if you could think some positive thoughts in her direction, I don't want to give her name. I know she made a post on her Instagram, but that's her business. Um, if you could think positive thoughts toward this young woman on Long Island who's only 29 and suffering from stage two breast cancer. Um, if you can take a moment, please do, um, to try and get her through this. Anyway. I want that wrap. My next whip isn't even really living in a project bag. Um, this is the the whip that I take with me when I'm on the go. So it is in a project bag, but most of it is not. 
So this is a pair of vanilla socks and um, I'm using Bliss by the Cozy Knitter and I'm, it's in her Heartbreaker colorway. So that was part of her Valentine's Day lineup. So that's what it looks like. Um, I do quite like the striping pattern. This sock is down to about where I'm going to start the heel. I am knitting for the first time on nine inch circulars. I'm using size ones because a lot of people said that they found that their gauge was too loose when they were knitting on ones, but I'm not sure I have as much stretch as I would like. I'm going to finish the socks and then I'm going to make up my mind. I did hate them at first. I hated them up through the ribbing. But by the time I got down to about here on this sock, I was fine. Um, I think that having, I do grip with almost my whole hand. I think that having some finished knitting to hold on to uh, helped out. So the first sock is about ready for the heel and I will definitely be able to get at least a pair of shorties out of these because I have quite a bit of this half of the ball left. This sock is down to about the heel, um, but I knit my socks in tandem. I don't want to get second sock syndrome, so, uh, and I do get second sock syndrome. So what I do is I have two needles going at a time, and usually I do them on two circs, um, but I'll have two going at a time, and then I knit part, stop, knit the other sock, and catch up. So this one is only up to the ribbing. I have the ribbing done on this in the contrast color, which did come with the yarn from the Cozy Knitter. Um, so I'm about to start the leg and I'll knit the leg down the same length and then stop and then I'll knit two heels and then I'll knit two feet and then I'll knit two toes um, so that I get through it without feeling like I need to bash myself in the head. But I'm looking at this and I'm feeling like I might need to do another row of ribbing on this sock. This, this one that I have here. I have to count them. I feel like they're not lining up, but that might just be because there's still stitches on the needle in that color. Maybe. I hope. Um, otherwise I'll have an extra end to weave in. But these are my on-the-go project and they are in a very small bag because sometimes in the summer I do like to carry a smaller bag um, and I want to make sure that I have something that I can really fit in just about anything. So this um, this project bag is a gift that a friend brought me from Taiwan uh, while she was living there and I do use it for small projects like this. I don't know who made it. I don't know if it was mass produced. I don't know much about it at all except that my dear friend Ivy brought it back from Taiwan and that it fits a sock project. You can fit um, part of a full skein too, obviously. Um, part but you have to have knit some of the sock already. Um, so this is perfect for these tandem socks where I've already split the ball and I'm winding it separately. So I don't knit socks often, but I do want to knit them more often. I think that these nine inch circs will really help me to do that because this went pretty fast. I did most of this in one day, two days, I think, um, which for me is a big deal because I have project focusing issues. Um, as we see by all the whips. Uh, yeah, but these will be a pair of vanilla socks. I haven't decided if I'm doing a heel with a gusset or if I'm just going to do fish lips kiss. I did fish lips kiss once before and liked it, but I do like the look of a flap and gusset, so we'll see. Yep. Okay. I'm trying to sit still with my projects when I hold them up because I've had some pretty awful screenshots for the thumbnails. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty awful. Like last week with the, that's gonna be my screenshot this week. Yeah, uh, anyway. <clears throat> this next project is for my swap partner for the next swap that I signed up for, even though I said I was going to take a break. It's in a three bags, three bags full studio project bag. Uh, this one is made with a spoon flower fabric. It is dust bunnies. <clears throat> and what I'm knitting for my, oh, yeah, what I'm, uh, my sock pattern will be linked in the down bar with everything else. Yeah, I do use a pattern for vanilla socks, but 
Anyway, three bags full. What I'm knitting for my swap partner um, is a pair of color work mittens. And I don't want to link the pattern or anything, um, so I'm just going to put down that they were color work mittens. I will link it afterward. But my swap partner has very distinctive taste in terms of uh, motifs. <clears throat> so I can show you this now, and I can probably show you one more time when it's up to about here um, before I have to turn this into secret knitting. But this is my second ever stranded color work project. I did want to practice so that I can work on the swag sweater eventually. Um, <clears throat> so you can see I have some sort of mystery creature right here. I don't want to say what it is and give away the um, theme. Eh, you know what? It's called the Night Creatures Mittens. They're very cute. I will link it. They're by Adrian Bazilia. Uh, there are other people in the group who like similar things, and the swap does take place around Halloween, so yeah. <laughs> um, these are little mushrooms. This is these. Sorry, these are little mushrooms. This is a mousy, and this is the start of a tree stump. The motif on the back is uh, little crisscrosses going up, and I think I made a mistake here, but doesn't bother me enough to want to fix it. Maybe because it's a gift I'll try to tink back. But um, yeah, and so they are going to be color work mittens. There is the option to knit a lining for them. Um, I did get the row gauge that I needed with this size needle. <clears throat> um, basically there's one version of the pattern and it's knit with sport weight yarn. To get the different sizes of the pattern, you knit with different size needles. So you can use a two, three, four, five um, to get different sizes. I think there's one on 1.5s too. Um, but yeah, so this is my cute little color work scene. It's kind of Halloween y. <clears throat> um, I'm using Lambstrings yarn in the Utopia Sport base. So I've got Spellbound, which is a sort of. No, can't get any closer than that, sorry. I'm using Spellbound, which has uh, some purple speckles, some brown speckles, and some blue speckles on a sort of grayish background. <clears throat> and Voodoo, uh, which is a very, very dark blackish purple. So I'm getting a pretty good contrast, except in a couple of places where I've had a purple speckle um, fall too close to the purple. Um, but I think it's okay. So, limp strings. I feel like Shanna herself would really like these spooky kind of mittens. Um, so yeah, these are for a swap partner and I think I'm going to be able to have them finished. They are a relatively small project. I do, I did make, you know, I did this all last night, so I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get them done by the ship date, but <clears throat> I'm working on these. so first real color work project, second stranded color work project ever. The first one was a set of 12 days of Christmas and mini mittens for a garland, and I can't find them. When I moved, I lost them. I don't know where they are. And it's very upsetting because I was not far along, but far enough along that I don't want to start over. Anyway, my final knitting whip is the one that I cast on last night. Um, I posted in a group that I belong to online that I felt like I was having a temper tantrum like a toddler. I had all of these whips um, and I wanted to start something new. So I decided I would give in and I did start something new. Um, the mittens I had cast on, even though I did all the work last night, I just had an eye cord on two needles. Anyway, <clears throat> this is my Darn Yarn MN bag. Uh, I bought this at the Allentown Fiber Festival, as I've mentioned before. The pattern that I'm knitting is called Sailing by Meg Gadsby. Uh, it is a very simple shawl, uses one skein of sock yarn. Um, it's basically garter striped with stockinette sections. So if I bring it close, you can see it. Um, <clears throat> it's a textural stripe. 
So you do get to see both stitches worked in the same yarn. Um, <clears throat> this is Twisted and Grooven by Groovy Hues Fibers and the colorway name is Fools and Kings. It is an older colorway. She will not be dyeing this anymore, but I love it. So since I already had it, I decided to knit it. And I will definitely at some point be wearing it with this blouse because <laughs> it's similar colors. Uh, but yeah, I had to cast something on. I figured I would cast on this so that I would still be participating in the summer shawl along even though I'm not working on my exploration station right now. Uh, it's a little bit complicated to be picking up and putting down since I'm modifying my current section. Um, yeah, but this is Sailing by Meg Gadsby. It's going to be a triangular shape shawl, asymmetrical, which is my favorite. And I hope to have it finished in time to participate with you guys in the summer shawl along. But if not, I did make one shawl and I started another shawl and I have several other shawl whips on the needles. I don't think I'm at a loss for shawls. <clears throat> so, Sailing by Meg Gadsby. And I will probably um, also bring that out and about with me, but more for if I'm actually sitting and knitting, not like waiting in line knitting like the sock would be, because I do have to count rows on this. But those are all of my knitting whips that I worked on. I do have a mountain of knitting whips. That's not all that I have. I have a lot. Um, last night when I was trying to convince myself not to cast something on, I piled them all on the middle of the living room floor to try and tell myself, look, you're being ridiculous, that I cast on anyway. So my final whip is a stitching whip. Uh, it is a Deathly Hallows Deathly Hallows pattern, and this is by The Stitching Garden. Again, I'm working on 18 Ada cloth because I didn't want to buy new cloth just for this pattern, uh, and I want it to be similar in size, so that's what I'm doing. My back side looks much neater on this one. I do not have any loose bits of thread laying around. Uh, I have been stitching down my ends much more effectively. I have no knots, which is a big deal. Um, and I have my needle stuck through, so I do still have a strand floating around. But it is much neater than my first one. So I do feel like I'm making progress. Um, yeah, but these will be framed together. The third one that I plan to do in that Harry Potter theme for now is um, a nine and three quarters, like platform nine and three quarters. So I'll have the three of those together in a frame, very simple but still an homage to one of my favorite young adult book series. One of my favorite series, period. <laughs> um, yeah, so acquisitions. I did buy some stuff and receive some stuff as a gift that I'm not going to show this week because I have my swap stuff that I'm gonna show off and I don't wanna detract from that. But I did visit two local yarn stores since the last time we recorded and I don't want to not show off that stuff because if they um, if they still have some of it and you wanted to go buy it and then it's been a month. Uh, so I'm going to make sure that I show that off. So the first thing that I got um, was at Suzanne's trunk show at the knitting store in Oceanside where um, I may be selling some yarn bowls. Uh, is this. I have the receipt inside so it's crumbling. Is this. I saw this Attenti bag on the Strings and More podcast after the Long Island Yarn Crawl. Shanna had purchased it for herself and I fell in love and I said oh if I ever see that then I'm not gonna go online and look for it but if I ever see that. So I went into the knitting store where she had gotten hers there it was. So this is technically a project bag. It's also some kind of furry beast. I feel like I murdered a Muppet. Shanna and I are a Muppet serial killing gang. Maybe. Uh, I love it. I don't know if I'm going to use it as a clutch or a project bag or if it is simply going to become a decoration here in my yarn room. 
but I, I had to have it. I saw it and I needed it. While I was there, uh, one of Suzanne's customers came in. Her name is Stephanie, and she has an adorable 10-month-old little boy. He also liked the bag. So I guess that talks about my mental age a little bit. I am in love with this bag. So um, I may put my sock project in it and use it as a clutch. I just won't put anything that will catch on and ruin the socks. Just put, you know, credit card ID, cell phone, chapstick, always chapstick, um, and go from there. But I love this fuzzy product bag. It's from Attenti. I bought it at the knitting store. This was the last one, <clears throat> but they did have other fuzzy Attenti bags. So if you love this bag, contact them. Um, or see if there's a local yarn store near you that carries attendee bags. They may have this or something similar. They had um, different color fluffy ones with different designs on them. But I needed this one because I'm a copycat. The next local yarn store that I went to uh, visit was Knit in Roslyn. I had a crisis with my colorwork mittens. I was knitting them on my Knitter's Pride Dreams wooden needles, which I do love, but I'm a klutz, and I knelt on the needle on the couch, my size fours, and snapped the needle. Clean off. Uh, there's no gluing that. I've tried. I broke a set of fours last year uh, in the car and did the same thing. So incidentally, that does mean that I do have a spare size 4 tip, so I don't have to buy anything to replace it, so it's kind of good, but I decided that I was going to knit those on metal tips instead because I don't want to have any stitches fall off if I break the needles again with color work. I'm very insecure about it, so I went in to get some chow goo needles, and this followed me home. This is Neighborhood Yarns, mm, Neighborhood, there we go, Neighborhood Fiber Company, and this is their Studio Sock Base. I've worked with their yarn before. They do have some beautiful solids and tonals, and this is the Mondowman colorway. Uh, they are named after different neighborhoods, I believe, in New York City, um, but I needed a pink, a solid pink, to go in my future three color cashmere shawl. I haven't cast it on yet. I do have, I can't quite reach them. I do have the other two colors. I purchased them at Woolen, uh, at the Indie Untangled trunk show there. Um, and I know that this will go with them. They are both from Swift Yarns. This one is a different uh, yarn. It's on a similar base without the cashmere, but the twist looks similar. So I'm going to go with it and it's going to be fine. I will have leftovers from the pink that I'm using in my exploration station. It's very close. I'm cutting it very close with that though, and I don't want to run out. I've been playing yarn chicken a lot lately, so I decided to just pick up another skein of hot pink. I have part of a skein of hot pink left from socks that I made as a push present for a friend several years ago, but sometimes you just need a new skein of hot pink yarn. So this followed me home. Uh, I did get the needles that I went into the shop for, and they were very helpful and very friendly, but um, they also helped me find some pink yarn. Uh, yeah, I do like going to knit. It is also between me in the Bronx and my mother out in Suffolk County. Um, I don't know why I never think of it. I do love the knitting place, but I also like knit. So good to know if I'm ever driving through on a day that I know the knitting place is closed I can go to knit uh, yeah but they are two excellent stores in northwestern Nassau so if you want to check them out you should uh, knit is increasing the number of indie dyers that it has um, in stock so that's always good when you can go into a shop and see some indie dyed yarn uh, that's local so 
they have a bunch more now. They, they've always had some, but now they have quite a bit. So check them out. Um, now it's time to talk about my swap box. So Heidi, Heidi Grantham was incredibly generous. Um, at some point she, we were talking because she left her name on the outside of the package, even though it was supposed to be a surprise. She put it in the return address, which is fine. We were talking and she was like, I'm worried that I didn't send you enough. Heidi, you sent me enough. You sent me more than enough. I'm very grateful and very pleased with everything that you sent. So Heidi is the dyer behind Wolfie Wool Yarn. She's a relatively new indie dyer, not brand new, but um, new enough, and her stuff is very pretty. Uh, so I'm very happy that I got, that I had her as my gifter in the swap. So she's Wolfie Wool Yarn, and she sent me some of her yarn, uh, but also some yarn from another dyer. This is the first thing she sent. This is 600 yards of DK Rambouillet. I've never knit with Rambouillet before. Um, it does feel a little bit rougher than Merino, but it also feels very springy. Um, I can't wait to try it. When I'm looking at it in the, in the hank, I feel like it has excellent definition, like already. I haven't even cast anything on. If I look at it next to this hank of Superwash Merino, you can't see the individual strands as well on this as you can on the Rambouillet. So I'm thinking that that will be um, pretty cool to work with. And what I'm going to make with this, I did try to pick out patterns for um, most of what she sent so that I was ready to use them um, and I could knit with them as soon as I had needles cleared off. Uh, so this is going to become a Silken Shams Silken Sands Shawl, tongue twister, by K Colleen Kinnersley. Um, and so it, that is a pattern that is written for DK weight yarn, which this is, um, and it is a lace pattern. Simple lace, but lace. So I'm going to knit some DK lace for myself, a, uh, a nice big shawl out of this. Um, everybody tells me I need to wear more bright colors, and I think that maybe they're right. So I'm definitely going to be enjoying 600 yards, one skein, 600 yards of DK Rambouillet. Then the other yarn that Heidi dyed for me, just for me, is this. This is a camel and silk, I have to look at the sheen on that, a camel and silk lace blend. There are 870 yards of it. Camel, when uh, when it's left natural, has sort of a gray sable color to it. Um, or no, it has a gray color to it. So when she dyed this, it kind of turned into a gray and sable blend. Um, and I think it's gorgeous. It is like a cloud. It's so soft. Like I want to, if it weren't going to cause the yarn to tangle, I want to like lay it all out and lay on it, but I don't want to tie a knot. So this is Camel Silk Lace in Sable Gray. And again, I tried to pick out projects for all of them. Look at the, look at the depth of the color on that. Like, seriously, it's just gray. Just gray. It's not just gray, it's gorgeous. Um, so I'm going to make a slightly more complicated lace shawl, also for me, because the yarn was gifted to me, so it's for me. Um, I'm going to make the blooming shawl by, and I have to look down at my notes, or right here on the floor, to see the person's name. It's by Sachiko Uemura, the blooming shawl, and that is, um, designed for slightly less yarn than I have here, but she does uh, give instructions to expand it um, following a, an increased pattern. So that, this is going to become a very elegant, very classic piece that I will, it's hopefully it will become like an heirloom 
Um, but yeah, this is gorgeous, Heidi. Just gray. Beautiful. The next yarn that she sent me was dyed by another indie dyer. Um, and this indie dyer um, is based on the West Coast also. She's Dandelions and Daisies. This is Cherish Stevens of Dandelions and Daisies. This is the yarn that I used to finish off the corner of my Hot Brook shawl. And again, look at the depth of color. This is called Smitten. This is on her high twist silky singles. Um, this colorway is amazing. I, again, I can't dye yarn. Or I've never learned to dye yarn, so I don't know if I can dye yarn. But looking at this as someone who does not dye yarn, I can't even begin to understand how she does this. Look at how beautiful it is. I cannot wait, it's like luminous. Um, I cannot wait to knit with any of these three. I really have to finish some whips so that I can cast them on. This is going to become a cowl, a lace cowl. Um, I had been, when I was planning to go to the Allentown Fiber Festival, I made an album in my phone knowing that they had not the best Wi-Fi. I made an album in my phone with patterns and then a text, a screenshot of a text edit page saying the yardage, the size, the potential color. Um, I had picked out a pattern called the Tides of March, not Ides, Tides, Cowl. Um, it's basically old shale stitch, which is very close to feather and fan, um, for the entire cowl. So the whole thing is like feather and fan or old shale stitch, the whole body of it. It's by Diane de Poitiers. De Poiters? I don't know, but um, it'll be linked in, in the down bar. And this, I think that this yarn, just looking at how it knit up on that tiny little section that I used it for, I think that this yarn will um, have a lot of depth and uh, really make that cowl more beautiful than just the, the well-written, well-designed pattern. So this is Dandelions and Daisies, the third skein, which is really, by my reckoning, the fifth skein, because that DK Rambouillet, DK usually is about 200 yards in a skein, and that's 600. So this is really like the fifth skein of yarn. And I got another one. This one is a, um, a, a mass-produced yarn. Um, but it is so soft. And when I used to work in a local yarn store, I did love this base and I never bought it for myself. I bought a lot of yarn while I worked there, but I did not buy this. This is 100% baby alpaca. It's by Mirasol, which is based out of Peru. <clears throat> this is the, their Paku Pura base in the Dark Harbor colorway. I don't know specifically what pattern I'm going to make out of this fluffy alpaca, but I know that I do want to make something for my feet. Not socks, but possibly little slippers, um, because I know that alpaca is supposed to be even warmer than wool. So I have, most of my apartment has um, laminate floors, so it does get a little bit chilly to walk around. And I figure if I make a lightweight sort of slipper, I can, like a slipper sock, I can put my foot <clears throat> into my regular slippers that I wear without any uh, major issues and wear them around and that they will get a lot of use. So yes, this yarn is 100% alpaca and I do plan to make socks out of it, slipper socks, but you can do that. <clears throat> you don't have to have, I'm sorry, I'm getting alpaca fluffs in my throat. Um, you do not have to have a yarn with a nylon content to make socks. I know that's scandalous and I can't believe I'm saying it on the internet, but you don't have to have nylon in your yarn to make socks. What makes, the nylon does help with durability, you're right, and it does add stretch, but you can make a sock with any yarn that has a decent twist if you're using a tight gauge. You want to make sure that you have those things lining up for you. So when I look at this, I can see that for a single especially, this is pretty high twist. Um, so I know that I'm going to have decent luck with this in terms of the twist. And then if I knit a slightly tight gauge, 
it will be pretty durable. Um, if anybody wants to argue about this, I will give you the name of somebody who has a PhD in fiber archaeology and can talk to you about how in the Near East, Middle East, they have samples of fiber that did not have any nylon in them, because nylon was not invented, that are still intact and were worn and used. So, I'm going to make nylon free slipper socks and they are going to be warm and cloud-like on my feet. That's the plan with this. I haven't picked out a specific pattern because there are so many um, and I don't have that many in my favorites already. Uh, I went through my favorites to pick out the patterns for the other yarns, but I don't have that many uh, slipper sock patterns in there. So I'm going to pick a pattern for this and they are going to be something super duper warm and cozy for my feet. So she basically gave me six skeins of yarn um, and I am so grateful and so happy that um, my gifter took such good care of me and I hope that my giftee, that Judy, thinks that I took as good care of her um, because I'm awed by what I was given. <clears throat> so the next thing Heidi gave me was a shawl pin and this shawl pin is by, I want to put it on a background, this shawl pin is by Jen Antiolini of Ridiculously Cute. Uh, this is I believe copper wire and it is a sheep shawl pin. So this pin slides out and then you can slide it back in to hold the shawl in place. I do have other shawl pins from Jen or another shawl pin from Jen. Um, that's my initials, but it is very small and delicate. I look at it more of a, um, a decorative accessory where I feel like this has, um, some heft to it. Um, the, the shawl pin that I have from her already, I wear like on a cowl as a pretty decoration, but this, I think I can really hold a shawl in place. So I can't wait for the weather to get a little bit cooler so that I can use it. I will probably store this for now until it's cool enough to use it on my stash holding situation behind me so that um, it can be seen and not just sit on my dresser in my bedroom. But <clears throat> this is beautiful. <clears throat> now back of us. Okay. Um, she also gave me, I don't know if this is made by Ridiculously Cute or if this is made by another stitch marker maker um but i've seen these in several places and liked them these are dragon egg stitch markers so they have iridescent textured scales on them like dragon eggs from game of thrones and then they come with a mama dragon who's defending her clutch of eggs so those are awesome <laughs> I've already used them. I, they were on my Seamus slouchy hat that I made um, and finished, but turned into a cowl. So they are all back on their little wire loop to be shown off, but um, they were excellent. The rings on them are nice and thick. The uh, joining ring that holds the charm on is nice and smooth. They're very lightweight. They're metal, but they are so light. Um, so those were in there also. The other, the other yarn related thing that Heidi got me, and I can show you this, the front page does not have any pattern content on it. This is a pattern that was in my wish list. This is called Lakefront. It's a shawl by Alicia Plummer. And it's designed for sport weight yarn. I do have uh, several skeins of Madeline Tosh Pashmina that I purchased when I was planning to make a shawl for my cousin for her wedding. Uh, I bought more colors and more length than I thought I would need knowing that if I ran out um, it would be hard to get a match to them. So it's probably going to be in this color with trim in this light gray. Um, I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to do it. 
I do also have a dark bluish gray, I believe, and a skein of yellow. So um, I have options. But this is Lakefront by Alicia Plummer. I've never knit an Alicia Plummer pattern before, but I've heard amazing things about her and her patterns. So I'm looking forward to that. The other stuff that she gave me is not yarn related, so I didn't bring it in here. I have a beautiful lavender and vanilla scented candle. It has actual lavender um, blossoms, blooms, flowers in it. Uh, so that really adds to the fragrance. I burned that right away in my bedroom the night that we opened our swap boxes. So we were all crammed into my room with a candle burning. <laughs> and it smelled beautiful. The other thing that was in this first swap box was Santa Maria style tri-tip seasoning from a local um, market out in California by Heidi. And I feel like the Frank's Red Hot Sauce Lady. I put that on everything. It goes in eggs, it goes in meat, it goes with vegetables. It's got the salt and pepper already in it. It's like, just sprinkle it on and you're good to go. Um, so that, that is amazing. And it came in a giant size container that's about as big as this massive hank of yarn. So I did share the love. I gave some to Suzanne and Thad and I gave some to my mom. Um, but it's amazing. Uh, so yeah, I will definitely be ha be needing to hit Heidi up for more when I run out because it's delicious. And I know what's coming to me. Heidi is making me a pair of beautiful cabled mitts, uh, fingerless mitts that'll be great for the fall. Uh, they're in a rich and deep yellow color with some green flecks. She made a she made a goofy error, which is something that I would do. Uh, so I, I feel even closer to Heidi. Uh, so I know I have those coming, and she's making me homemade sourdough bread. I know you can get sourdough bread on the East Coast, but every bakery that I've gone to on Long Island, I haven't checked in the Bronx yet. Every bakery that I've gone to on Long Island, when I've asked if they have sourdough bread, has been like, what? We don't bake that. So apparently it has something to do with the humidity. We may be able to make awesome pizza dough, but we can't make great sourdough. So you can get it in the grocery store and it is okay, but I am so looking forward to some homemade crusty, delicious sourdough bread. Can't wait. Um, so yeah, I should be getting that package soon. Heidi says that she was about to ship it out, so um, I have to be mindful because the downstairs neighbor dog, he's a massive 150 pound English Bull Mastiff, and he's not mean aggressive, but he is aggressive. Um, aggressive in that he wants to lick all the skin off your body with kisses but because of his size he's dangerous um, when Suzanne and Thad got here last week I tried to hold him back so that they could come in and he took me down to the ground like he pulled me and I landed hard on my knee and then it's finally gone but he had given me like a paw shaped bruise while I was congratulating him on being good and not eating my friends it's partially my fault, but also partially my landlord's fault. Uh, well, my landlady's son. Um, the dog has the run of the front of the house, which is fine. It's their house, their dog. But um, my friends were standing out in the hot weather holding heavy things. Charlie had to go inside to get the leash. I said, oh, I can do it. It's fine. I feel bad for the dog, honestly, because he wants so badly to love everyone, but he's just too big. He's scary because he's too big. Um, so yeah, his name is Duke and all day long I hear my landlady yelling Dookie. Yep. Like poopy. Dookie. Um, all day. Uh, so she's here alone with him. He weighs more than her and she's not an animal person. So it's very scary for her too, but he wants so badly to be a good dog. All right, uh, so I have to be careful about my mail 
because of the dog. The mailman is, for obvious reasons, not on great terms with the massive bull mastiff. Um, if anybody doesn't know what a bull mastiff is, if you've seen the movie Sandlot, Hercules, big dog, was a, a bull mastiff. Um, and they are friendly, but they are big. So anyway, uh, the mailman is afraid of him. So what he does to avoid having to come near the dog, and no, he should not bring dog biscuits, no, the dog would take him to the ground. It's dangerous for him. Um, he tosses the packages up. We have an elevated porch. He tosses the packages up and over. So, um, I have to be mindful of when the mail is coming so that I can get my delicious bread before Duke does. Um, yeah. He... Unfortunately, this means some things have been broken when they've arrived to me. Like, um, some timid monsters have arrived with parts missing. Um, I'm gonna start having things like that shipped to my mom's house. Lesson learned. Um, but, yeah. So, I have to watch for my bread. Like a crazy person. Because I have a bread problem. Anyway, I'm rambling on about bread and dogs now. So, that means I'm probably done podcasting. I will see you all in two to three weeks. Hopefully I will have some more FOs because this mountain of whips is starting to get embarrassing. Uh, I hope everybody has a good two weeks. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you liked what you saw and remember to subscribe to my channel. Join the YouTube group, or YouTube group. Join the Ravelry group so that you can participate in the summer show along and interact with other people who are watching. Thank you all for coming. Have a nice day. Bye.